Yes, uh, a very good afternoon uh, to our viewers. Today we have got a special guest, one of uh, an award winning. She has got many accolades uh, which she collected last year and some previous years. So I might waste my time saying a lot of things. Uh, let's give this floor to the amazing, hardworking entrepreneur. Her name is called uh, Sympathy Sivanda. Uh, she's, she's called Mangwenya, a totem. So today we are yeah. going to be, we are going to hear a lot from Sympath. How are you, Sympath? Hello, Stuart. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, today, I'm sure I'm one of the luckiest interviewer because <laughs> I'm interacting with someone who has got a lot of experience, in a main in, in a number of things. Uh, so not to preempt uh, the interview, but uh, I just want maybe you to in brief, you can make uh, those who know you to remember and those who don't know much of sympathy. Just a brief, who is Simbat Sivanda Mangwenya? Thank you so much, Suwaj. You know, I'm the one who's very generous for having uh, for being invited to this platform. Thank you very much. And um, to all the viewers out there, thank you so much for the support. And Sympathy is someone who loves life. I love family and I'm an entrepreneur and I am involved in food manufacturing. I'm also involved in book writing, mostly ghost writing as well as publishing. And I'm also a TV host, so I, I, I'm somebody who just loves working with people, um, transforming people's lives, and just making sure that everybody lives worth the lives. So that's it, Stuart. Wow, wow, wow. What an amazing um, lady, hardworking. But uh, tell me something. Um, we had quite a number of different ambitions when we were growing up. I understand grade one, grade two, we used to talk of pilots, some nurses, some are saying doctors, some um, used to talk of engineering, but tell me something um, behind your journey. As an entrepreneur growing up, was entrepreneurship part of your ambitions or is something which then happened on the way or maybe the recent uh, years? So, um. I, I grew up in a family where we worked so hard. Our parents really mm -hmm. encouraged hard work. So yeah. we didn't know that it was entrepreneurship at that age, but we knew mm -hmm. that we were running businesses. So what I knew was, I, I didn't really know what exactly I wanted to do when I grew up, but what I knew was there was going to be entrepreneurship. Um, there was going to be business, actually not that other team, and there was going to be writing because at a very young age, um, my father, in fact, would buy, would buy me a notebook and a pen and a pencil and coloring uh, pens every time. So I was really involved in writing, in a lot of writing, a lot of reading. So I knew that was going to be in my future. And when it comes to business, um, what, our, what our parents would do was, um, I remember my father is a constructor, even up to this day. So he would, after building houses, he'll take me and my siblings and then... Um, he would say, I'm not hiring anybody to do the cleaning. So I was, I think I was close to about grade five or so. And he would say, I'm not hiring anybody to do the cleaning. I'm hiring you girls and you're going to clean this house uh, with the help of your mother. And um, I'll pay you the exact amount that I was going to pay if I hired people. So, yeah, I would go do the cleaning. Of course, our mother helped and we had an aunt also helping but it felt so good just having that salary at the end of the day to say, okay, so this is us. So that happened oftenly. And now that I think about it now, I think they were just um, putting in those seeds of entrepreneurship into our lives, even without us knowing. Wow. But tell me something. What's the secret? Because uh, a lot of upcoming, the youth right now, they talk of unemployment, they talk of uh, being stuck, people, they, 
don't know where to start. But you, I understand uh, you when you were introducing yourself, you talked of entrepreneurship, you talked of TV presenter, you talked of pro project management, consultant, ghost writer. You have got many, many positions. How tell, tell us the secret. How are you managing? They are quite a number. Even myself, I I used to call myself a jack of all trades, but um, to your case now, I'm sure I'm slightly below you. Tell us the secret. How are you managing it? All right. <laughs> so, um, I mean, background does play a part. Um, the school I attended, I I'll love to just give it a shout out. It's Nyazura Adventist High School. At that school, we had a theme, and the theme was you're going to be trained your head, your heart, and your hand. And they would encourage oh, us to okay. say, yeah, they, they would say, you're going to use your hand to make sure that you get um, an income, a, a livelihood. And they were going, they were saying, you have to use your heart to also get another income or another livelihood. And then they were saying, you have to use your head also. So these things do come together. And when you're doing them, it doesn't feel like a lot. It, it doesn't feel like I'm doing a lot of things because all these things really come together <laughs> but, in the same space. Uh, so, yeah. There, there is something, sorry, maybe if I uh, mistakenly interjected you, but there's something which I admire myself. I am just, yeah. uh, my mind is uh, running around to say, maybe one of my kids, I will send one of my kids to Nyazura. Just because of, uh, I mean, the good thing which you're talking about in high school. <laughs> but tell me something. It's a good thing. Uh, first, yeah, first, uh, these past days, is it last week or something like that? I understand, I'm sure there is um, a new TV channel. I'm, I don't know, is it an online or something like that? And I'm sure you have got something which you're doing, the TV host or something. Can you shed more lights on that one? So, yeah, um, congratulations to Zimbabwe. We now have a, a second TV station after ZBC. Oh, it's called oh, 3K oh, TV. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, we okay. do. We do. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so tell me station, something. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me yeah. something. I this just TV, wanted to ask something. Yeah. Something like, yeah. how did you manage? Uh, were there some auditions? How were you called? How did you manage to settle this one? <laughs> so uh, God's providence. I really believe in God's providence. Uh, what happened last year uh, with COVID, like there were so many changes that were happening around my life. So I thought to myself, I'm going to add so many soft skills into my life. I'm going to just make sure that I go out there. I learn a lot um, online. I get to interact with a lot of people online and just make sure that I'm, I'm learning. So I bumped on this advert that are saying the TV people, the TV people Zimbabwe. Um, and then uh, I, I enrolled and I was taught about so many things that I didn't even know about TV presenting, about how to really exude confidence on TV, how to uh, do voiceovers, how to really present, how to host my own show. So um we were just linked to to say, okay, so now you can intend, you can start uh, practicing. And then a call came up from 3K TV. We didn't even know what it was, but they were saying, okay, we're looking for people that are good at presenting. And then our names were sent there. And then we went through the rigorous process of audition. It was really, really, really terrifying. But um as it were, I was one of the people that were chosen. And I thought I was just going to be, you know, doing one of those. But then I got my whole show, a whole show that I'm hosting on this uh, TV. And the platform is like it's on DSTV uh, on channel 293. I just have to put it out there. So um, I feel so blessed. And, you know, um, it's all coming together to say, I am talking to entrepreneurs, uh, tracing their journeys, going to where they work. Like um, the first person that we did was an all-rounder consultant and we went to a boutique and there are going to be so many people that do a lot of things that we are visiting. So I, I'm so passionate about it. I, I love it. And I feel I'm in a space that I love. This yeah. is awesome, but something which I want to know before I uh, ask you the next question. 
because of the experience which you have attained so far, um, the workshops and the training which you did, uh, just promise me something that uh, one of the days when I ask you to add to my experience, you will do that. <laughs> I will, Stuart, I will. <laughs> That's thanks. Thank you so much. But uh, you have got some awards uh, when I was going through your profile. Um, I managed to see amazing awards which so far you have scooped at a tender age. Tell, 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 tell me something. Tell the world, the viewers, how many awards <laughs> so far have you managed to, to, I mean, to be awarded, to, to, to get? And were, were there some, I mean, were you surprised? Were you shocked? Um, the nominations, the achievement, which you have so far amassed. Tell, can you shed more lights there? All right, so I I am I am again very grateful, uh, especially for the mentors in my life who have really helped me to push to actually say I am not going to settle for mediocrity. I'm not going to join the people that are always crying and um, saying uh, things are bad. I'm going to be one of those people that creates opportunities. So the first award that I won that really touched my soul was an award that was given to me through CBZ, the bank, and a program called the Youth Entrepreneurs um, Program. This program was uh, an, a program that came through as a competition and I managed to wa to to win. Um, it was I think it was about five thousand US dollars that was injected into my food manufacturing business, and that award really helped me to say I am on the right track. Because to what uh, before that I I worked in an NGO for close to ten years, and that was a comfort zone because I I I think I had everything that I thought I needed. And I was having fun. I really loved helping people. So I was really, really help, having fun. But then something was really missing in my heart. I thought I, I really wanted to do my own things. I wanted to control my time. <laughs> I didn't want to somebody to say, wake up at five and, you know, go back at nine and things like that. I didn't want that. I wanted to, to be in charge of my time to say, okay, now I will take this interview with Stuart or not <laughs> so that that was what was missing so i managed to then um start the, the the food manufacturing business but it wasn't really doing well so when i got into the competition and i won it was like oh my god so you're saying this is it this is what i'm meant to be doing so that really touched my life i have then won several awards after that um some from from ProWeb, which is a professional um, business group for women, and some from Zimbabwe National Chamber of Commerce, some from the Mega First, like several awards, uh, another one from the coaching, um, yeah, for, for the mentorship programs that I do. I mean, all these are now coming in to just complement what I thought the first uh, award did to say you are in the right track. Uh, there's something which I want to ask before I forget. Um, yeah. there, is, there, there, there is some amazing work which you're doing. I'm sure something to do with this manufacturing activity, manufacturing company or manufacturing activity. There is Amandla Brands. Can you shed more rights? Uh, can, you, can, you, can you make us know more? Can you unpack around that Amandla Brands? So Amanda Brands is a, a food manufacturing. We actually call ourselves creatives in the food um, industry. So we manufacture food, uh, value add uh, cereals, nuts, um, legumes. What we do is we we combine the way food was made back then um, with new researches. So we, we we don't really have like complicated food stuffs. We have products like peanut butter. We have products like nuts like corn but what we're doing is bringing that glow to the foods that were forgotten so to say because we believe that um, when we adopted the western lifestyle we also adopted their illnesses 
we never used to have all these um, non-communicable diseases all around us. Like we never used to have people dying in in thousands of um, sicknesses like uh, like the cancers, uh, lifestyle diseases. So we we believe that by bringing in our healthy food, the foods that we're eating back then, we are also taking a step forward to um, to help alleviate this pro problem. So what we do is we research, we, we actually go, we talk to the elders, we understand what they do, the kind of food they, 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 they enjoy, and how, how nice it is and how we can really package that to be so attractive to that person who, is never, uh, who never grew up in the rural areas but needs to have access to this healthy nutritious food so yeah we are a team of very young and vibrant people that enjoy um working around food and just making it as attractive as possible but also making sure that people are healthy <laughs> uh, which which is very good but i wanted to ask one thing um yes. <laughs> Now, uh, now that you have got an established uh, Amanda Brands, which you guys you are doing very well, uh, is it serving also as maybe a marketing activity, or maybe you are, you are, you are only on the brands because branding and marketing they work hand in hand. So, I mean, your manufacturing company in this Amanda, the way you explained, is it also more into marketing? All right. So um, what happened? Um, I used to work for a marketing and branding company uh, before yes. I became a standalone in Amanda. So I'm I'm really strong in marketing. I'm also strong in branding. So I can help people do that. And yes. I am doing it with um, with the with the, I would say another side business called the Blue Scroll, where we are helping uh, authors get published. Where we are helping authors. Um, brand themselves and yeah things like that so i really do have that experience in marketing and branding that i think is really really playing a positive role in what i am doing now so tell me something you're also uh, covering a wider range a wider scope which include you nurturing uh, i mean book writers, uh, those who write novels magazine whatsoever you help them you They've got uh, maybe training facilities, or you only help them to publish, which is which here. So uh, this started as, as as a joke. I mean, the, the, the COVID came and we were all crying, but it also brought in opportunities. So I I was just taking like um, I used to speak for a fee, but then with COVID, I just said, you know what, I'll speak for free. Like, just call me in any of your WhatsApp groups, in any of your Zoom platforms. I'll jump in there and just talk and just motivate somebody so that, yeah, we, we do something. So what happened is I, I was called into a group called She Means Business. And She Means Business is for, for women that I, uh, are doing a lot of different businesses. So I went in there and then I, I started just encouraging people to write. Because for me, I believe I'm an author and I became an author at the age of 19. And I, I've seen how it has opened some doors I would never have opened. So I encourage women to, okay, everybody, <laughs> but mostly women, uh, to write as a way of, of Averting problems like psychosocial problems that would lead to suicide and also like in a living, you can be selling your, your books, you can be selling out content and things like that. So I was just telling these women and I was saying, uh, you know what, there's something called infopreneurship where you're doing the main business as, as, as an entrepreneur, but you can also just use the information that you have and package it in into a magazine, into into a podcast, into a YouTube channel and things like that. And you can then get some money out of that gradually. So after that, my DM was on fire. <laughs> like there were so many people coming in asking about this and I became overwhelmed. I didn't want to be a bad person, a bad trainer. I didn't want to ignore people. So I just said, okay. I'll create a group and then everybody gets in there. Then they can ask it once and then I can be responding to them. And it was filled in a few minutes. 
I was like, oh my goodness, am I taking in something that is too much in here? So uh, fortunately, I do have friends all over. <laughs> so I approached some friends, about five friends, and I said, okay, guys, I want you to help me manage this group. I want you to help me just answer all these questions and things like that. And then it became something that we were doing occasionally. And now we do have one for adults, a group for adults, a group for young ones, where we train them for free but then we then give them some services where they have to pay where we are helping them edit where we are helping them uh, package their content well so it has grown into something i mean it's over a year now so it has grown into something that brings in some income even without me planning <laughs> so yeah <laughs> that's that's, that, the, that, that's the mentorship that's, one that, that's awesome um at one time, you yourself, you featured, yeah. um, I understand, in a North African magazine. Is it the Western, yeah. the Western African magazine? I'm sure it's in Nigeria. Yes. Uh, Taylor, <laughs> can you share with us how was your feeling after you, you have gone beyond the uh, southern region, beyond Sadak, beyond southern Africa? up, up the, uh, in the northern part, the western part of Africa. Tell us, how was your feeling? How did you feel? Oh, my after God. <laughs> I mean, there are some things that happen in your life, and you're like, this is an out-of-body experience. Is it happening to me? <laughs> um, okay, that, that really opened some doors for me, and... Um, I believe in the, I'm, I'm a Christian and I believe in the Jabez prayer where he says, um, uh, Lord, please hold my hand, enlarge my territory. So when I was approached by this magazine uh, based in Nigeria to share my story, I just thought, really? What, what do you want? <laughs> like imposter syndrome just comes sometimes where you think like, is my is my story worth sharing? Like, is, is, it, is it really, like, who wants to know? <laughs> but I've realized that, okay, I am making an impact and I should just jump on, on, on the opportunities that are relevant to me. So this came in and um, I was interviewed and the story went out there and I realized that Nigeria is actually a very good market for, for, my, for my snacks. So it's something that I'm hoping to pursue further. So yeah, I, I, I'm really fortunate about that interview. That's awesome. Tell us something because we are now winding up now. Um, it has been, it has been a robust, hectic. Uh, the intensity of this interview, I liked it so much. Uh, can you also can can you can you can you also explain a bit? I um, mean, in a very uh, few uh, seconds, this human humanitarian passion. Uh, when did it start? Was it an inborn thing? Or maybe you realize the passion when you're already maybe after school, um, you're now working and now doing your own things. This humanitarian passion, where did it start? So um, I think it's an inborn thing. My name is Sympathy, so which means when I was born, I was just given that name to say, you're going to help. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think it, it, it just stuck with me. Uh, imagine me being violent to others and my name is Sympathy. It won't work. <laughs> so, yeah, and yeah. I was also fortunate to, to, to work in an NGO sector where I was helping people every day. So, yeah, that, that's another thing. And now that I'm out of the NGO, I take in some roles where I do project management for different people that a philanthropist or help in the humanitarian sector. Like I worked with um, the phenomenal Dr. Divine Sukula to help launch um, a library in her in a uh, village in, in Gutu. And it's really, really doing well. In a few days, we're actually going to commemorate the International Women's Day at that library. And it's changing a lot um, in that community. So I take up those roles to help because I feel I was called to help. I'd love to do more actually as a humanitarian. Thank you, Stuart. Excellent. Uh, so on social platforms, um, to those people who want to reach out to you, uh, your business, you talked a lot. There are some aspiring um, 
book writers, there are some people who might want to know much to do with entrepreneurship just to overcome um, unemployment because I'm sure you're, you, you, you're your own boss where you are right now. You, you don't knock yeah. to any company to seek employment. So to those who might want to seek your services, your knowledge, you are more like a think tank. To me, I will describe you as a think tank. Are you, oh my what, what, what are your uh, social uh, media platforms, your Twitter handle, Facebook, IG, Instagram? Um, LinkedIn, ETC, which you might want to share as we are winding up now. All right. So uh, please get in touch with me on my business um, uh, places where I have Amanda Brands across all platforms. And uh, my personal is Sympathy Mangwenya or Sympathy Sivanda. You get in touch in there. And I also want you to watch my show. It's called Hustle mm. on 3K TV, DSTV, yes. Channel 293, <laughs> 3K TV. Yes. Um, I mean, every day there's something running on, 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 on the hustle. So, yeah, I would want okay. us to have conversations around that. So, yeah, please do get in touch. So, you, you, you need to mention the channel. You said the channel what? On DSTV? Your show it's and channel. on the which channel. All right, so it's channel two nine three on DSTV, and the which, channel is called three three K TV. Three K TV, and uh, during the week, is it on daily basis? Once a week. The All channel? right, so um, yes, it, it runs throughout, but my show runs on between uh, between Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, what's the time? So it's got different time zones there, but when people get in touch with me on social media, I have all that information there. Thank you so much, Sympathy Sivanda Mangwenya. It has been an awesome interview. You see, now, um, I'm lucky, you're also lucky because my channel, the channel has been, um, has been idle for about uh, one and a half, if not two years now. So you are the first okay. person to feature. May the good Lord bless you. Cheers. Thank you, Thank you so much, Stuart.